And with that, welcome back to the rest of the story. Brittany didn't have to work today, so she came up and helped me haul in some of these bales. We had just over 100, so we had a pretty well full day of hauling them in. These bales aren't as big as our John Deere balers bales. These are uh, four by five and a half foot bales. Really heavy though, um, for what they are. That crone baler really packed them tight. Did a really consistent job also. Uh, the only issues we had were a couple net wrap issues when we first were starting out. Um, fixed those in about two minutes and it was pretty much smooth sailing from there on out. Now if you can see the blue sky and sunny that pretty much is, sums up the weather we've had in the last week. Really nice dry weather, good for getting a lot of work done. Um, all those little random odd jobs that we have been trying to do. Um, hauling manure, now that we got all of our hay made, hay 2018 is officially done. Um, we're going to go through, we have to do haul a bunch of manure. We got a couple trees that we got to pick up that Ryan and I cut down about a month ago now, but ever since that rain hit, we haven't been able to get back out to, to do anything with them. Uh, the bean head, the bean head will probably be a video in its own, but probably just an overview because it doesn't need a whole lot of work. It needs to be greased, as always, uh, but as far as general maintenance on it, it really doesn't need anything. It's had a new cutter bar in it two years ago, and I looked at it, I looked over in my machine shit already and basically just going to go through and grease it up and make sure nothing's really stiff on it or locked up. Uh, the floating mechanism on that head has been an issue in the past where um, if you let it sit outside in the rain and it starts to rust, um, the head doesn't necessarily always want to float so easy because it starts to develop just enough rust that it, it doesn't want to want to flex. Or maybe that's not the right way to say it. It doesn't want to uh, sense the ground when you drop the head down that head is um, built to float and it automatically it senses like with the combine it senses the the ground and sometimes that is, can be a little bit of an issue um, just because it's sat over the winter it's a combination between the combine and the the bean head and just things sit long enough they get kind of stiff I know that's how I am if I wake up early in the morning and my back doesn't really want to work right away. So the hay came back is coming back really nice already. Um, it's been cut for right approximately a week right now and the grass has got a nice green look to it. Grandpa always said uh, the 15th of September is the latest that you wanted to cut hay because you wanted to give alfalfa a chance to grow back and um, not leave it in kind of a weakened state, you know, after you just cut it and go through a frost or get a really hard killing frost uh, because that'll in turn kill the alfalfa plant in itself and reduce your your stand going into next year. So uh, granted we don't have near as much alfalfa as we used to. We used to have upwards of 2 to 250 acres. We're down to, oh, all together. Um, if you want to cheat and include the 20 acres of pasture oh, about 25 acres of pasture and all that uh, we got probably just over 50 some acres probably close to 60 acres if I included all the waterways and everything that we cut uh, we have uh, what are we at right now I want to say we're right about 30 acres of alfalfa or of hay ground and we have two strips that now that are cut um, it's the last two strips that need to be doubled up and we'll have all of our strips widened out and they won't be as narrow as what they were when grandpa was here because equipment is bigger um, between the 82 and the tillage tools excluding the chisel plow and the corn planter uh, wider strips actually speed up your day quite a bit when you're not having to constantly turn around or constantly change or chase around strips the rest of the day because we do farm on contours and that is the reason uh, somebody just asked me again the other day why we farm with 
alternating strips of corn and beans and why some of our strips have it's corn and hay and corn and hay um, that is to reduce erosion we don't put our fields in solid crops because we do try to keep the soil where it is at now that doesn't always work when you get those really heavy downpours like the spring when we had everything worked up and we got about well, what did we get like two inches two and a half inches and in like a half hour um, kind of uncommon but it happens when you get a really bad downpour like that we had some ground that washed a bit when we had that rain that we really don't have washing issues so I mean mother nature always seems to win out never seems to fail but I'm just glad we get all the hay in we can start focusing a little bit heavily on harvest that grain bin really needs to get done yet once we, uh, the guy comes back to put the floor in. So, uh, the way things are looking, I'm just worried that, concerned that they're going to show up to want to put that bin in and it'll be like a week or after, <laughs> after we already wanted to start harvest. So, always the, there's always something. That's, that's farming. There is always something that you, have to divert a little bit more time and attention to than than you typically would so yeah all in all happy with how the hay turned out and let's just hope that this winter isn't too overly uh terrible you know seems out southwest wisconsin i mean it could be worse we don't have snow like tyson does up in canada so that's it i'll talk to you guys later